Okay, thank you. So hello, I'm Harkak Sukabe, a postdoc in University of Geneva, working with Anne Behama and Jeremy Blazo. I got my PhD from University of Tokyo last year and moved to Geneva and started with work with nice people here. Uh, to organizers, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to give a talk here. And we had a lot of exciting talks in this conference, including those about H1 class fraction in the IGN. And my talk is about LA fraction for faint galaxies in the post or end of reionization epoch. As Lola introduced recently, observation of large fluctuation of Lyman alpha forest in the spectra of high G quasars suggests a late and or patchy reionization scenario, which has been reproduced well in simulation. Another problem of the H1 gas fraction in IGM is LA fraction. In recent studies, Devars et al. found a low value of LA fraction than previously reported, and it suggests more moderate or flat evolution of LA fraction. And it implies a later and or patchy reionization process. To assess the evolution of the LA fraction, or especially the drop of the LA fraction at redshift higher than six, an accurate measurement of LA fraction at redshift lower than six is required. However, in the previous work, the selection of the parent sample and the measurement of Lyman alpha emission are inhomogeneous over a wide redshift range. So building on previous studies, now we have been able to construct a more complete picture in UV and in Lyman alpha. Therefore, in this work, using deep HST and MUTE data, uh, we have a constructed UV complete sample and the homogeneously detected Lyman alpha emission to assess the evolution of Lyman alpha meter fraction. First, we constructed our UV sample based on photometric red shift in the Rafalski catalog and checked the completeness in UV. These panels show the UV magnitude distribution and the completeness limit in the previous work. The blue shades indicate a popular UV magnitude range of so-called faint sample in the pioneering work in Stout et al. Recently, Alavar Hilo et al. and Devas et al. pushed the completeness limit to a faint UV magnitude. However, none of the previous studies have a UV complete in this faint UV magnitude range. On the other hand, we confirmed that the UV magnitude distribution of our sample shown by this magenta line is consistent with the expectation from the luminosity function shown by the dashed black line. Our sample is complete in the blue shade and even fainter UV magnitude down to minus 70.75 from red shift 3 to 6. The LA fraction has been well investigated already, but this is the first work with a UV complete sample. Next, we, we use Muse Happle Ultra Diffuse Survey data and detected Lyman alpha emission in 1D spectra without including halo emission. We inspected all the detected sources visually. Here is an example of contaminated solution, contaminated detection. Although we can clearly see Lyman alpha in 1D spectra, it is due to a neighboring Lyman alpha meter as shown by narrowband of MUSE and HSD images. So thanks to MUSE IFU data, now we have a homogeneous Lyman alpha sample by excluding this contamination. Next, then we measure Lyman alpha fluxes with asymmetric Gaussian fitting and estimated the completeness from simulations with fake Lyman alpha lines. Okay, I will move on result. This plot shows the LA fraction as a function of redshift for UV complete sample down to minus 70.75 magnitude for strong Lyman alpha meters. 
The error bar is calculated from binomial proportion confidence interval, not by person error. We find a low value of LA fraction, roughly 10 to 30% at red shift three to six. And then this low value may suggest a short duty cycle of Lyman alpha meters. We also confirm a moderate increase of a leaf fraction from red shift three to six. Next, we compare our result with previous ones from common UV magnitude range, so-called faint sample, but brighter than the previous plot. Our LA fraction is consistent with those in the literature at red shift four to five for both weak and strong Riemann alpha meters. And we confirm that the slope down slope extends down to red shift three for both samples. However, at red shift five to six, we find a low value. So combined with the latest results, it may imply a late or parterianization. Next, we study the dependence of LA fraction of UV magnitude comparing with previous results. Surprisingly, our result is consistent with no dependence of LA fraction on UV magnitude. The slope remains flat in contrast to stop at all. It implies a weaker dependence of the intrinsic equivalent width and h one column density or dust attenuation on UV magnitude than expected. In this plot, in particular at the faint UV magnitudes, there is a significant difference of difference in LA fractions. The most plausible cause of the difference is an LBG selection bias discussed in Devos et al. and Inami et al. So in this work, we estimated the effect of LBG selection bias for our sample and quantitatively for the first time. First, in a radar, in a radar band of LBG selection, strong line alpha boosts the flux, UV flux in the filter above the selection limit. It's typically more than 0.1 magnitude like this. And it also depends on red shifts. So the effect stronger to the at the higher red shift. Then we estimated the completeness for galaxies without Lyman alpha emission and with strong Lyman alpha emission. The LBG selection bias can boost the LA fraction by a factor of 1.5 at a faint UV magnitude close to the limit of selection uh, signal to noise threshold. The result in stock at all would be consistent with ours without this bias. We also compared our result with prediction in a semi-analytic galaxy formation model, Galix, Galil et al. It is combined with 3D Lyman alpha radiative transform model in Behan et al. And we find that Galix with the varsity star formation model shown by solid lines here can reproduce our mu's result better than the fiducial Galix model shown by dashed line in both panel of LA fraction as a function of UV magnitude and as a function of red shift. And using this burst star formation model, we assess the effect of field 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 to field variance. So we use a hundred a hundred mock catalog from Galix with burst star formation model, and we find that the field to field variance error shown here is smaller than the statistical error in the model and also find that it's more than the uncertainty of our MUSE result. Therefore, we conclude that field-to-field uh, -field variance does not affect our result. So here I summarize this talk. We have a study that LA fraction with the faint, uh, with the first UV complete sample and homogeneously 
major alignment permission from redshift three to six, we could go down to magnitude minus 70.75. And from our study, we have a general note for the future. It is essential to build a UV complete parent sample with a magnitude to cut at the band without diamond for contamination in selection to avoid the LBG selection bias. It can lose the LA fraction factor 1.5 at a faint UV magnitude close to the limit of signal to noise slash four. And uh, currently, I work on the next Muse project. And so in this work, we focus on the relation between UV galaxies and central line magnitude. But in my current work, uh, we studied U the relation between UV galaxies and Lyman halo. So we use Muse extremely deep field data and measure Lyman halo fraction. So stay tuned. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you, Haruka. So time for questions. I got the other question from Matthew Hayes. Uh, very interesting to see such little evolution. Can you make any other evolutionary statements about the LBG sample? For example, beta slopes, presence equivalent width of other emission lines, Lyman alpha spectral shapes. Uh, that is a very interesting point. So using our sample, we can study the evolution of this UV property and Lyman alpha property, but uh, I didn't include it in this paper. And, uh, but for example, uh, we don't see so much strong evolution of lamma alpha property, lamma alpha hill property, uh, like in Florian's paper, but uh, we can using, especially using MXDF data, maybe we can see um, some details in the future. Thank you. Right, great. So, any more questions from the audience? Okay, just, just a quick question from me. So, for your LA fraction versus magnitude, UV magnitude, in this plot, do you include the other field to field variance errors in it? Uh, here, we didn't include the field to field variance error, but uh, as estimated from simulation, it is not the dominant contribution, so it doesn't change a lot even if we include the field-to-field -field variance to this measurement. Okay, all right. So any more questions from the audience? Oh, yeah. Uh, I got this question from the other Charlotte Mason. Impressive work to build such a complete sample. In the context of Laura Keating's talk on re late reionization, given the small area of the survey, is it possible that this region is a late reionization region which would suppress Lyman alpha? Yeah, this is a very important point. Yeah, as you said, the survey field of Mills, uh, the field is very small. Uh, however, and considering the cosmic volume and the direction, taking into account the direction of red shift and cosmic volume it does not, uh, it's not so small. So in the simulation of uh, cosmic variance using semi-analytic model, uh, we use the same cosmic volume and uh, using 100 mod catalog. And uh, we found that it does not affect, cosmic variance does not affect our result. So, we don't think that we rapidly see the neutral hydrogen islands at rate of five in our result. We, in statistical sense. Okay, great. So there are just a quick, another question from Aaron Smith. You discussed this, but it is still a bit unclear to me. How robust is the removal of selection bias and contamination? Uh, maybe about 
Lyman Famita fraction, Lyman Famita selection. So for the Lyman fraction, we remove the contamination from neighboring sources, combine the HSD image and uh, convert the MUSE PSS, we can obtain the mask for the object. And uh, we also have a MUSE narrow band images. So we can estimate that we can check that fair emissions comes from in the 1D spectra. So we can exclude the contamination better than previous 1D slit measurements. 